Well, there, there, there are temporal miracles, and then there's miracles that stay with us. One of the greatest miracles of the Prophet Sallallahu is the Sahaba. Because if you just study the lives of the Sahaba, how do you get all those people at the same time in one place? Men and women, some of the most extraordinary people that ever lived. I mean, Omar ibn al-Khattab, in the hundred most uh, influential people in human history, uh, Omar ibn al-Khattab is in there according to the Prophet according to the historian Michael Hart was number one and he was Jewish historian I think he was being very fair but he puts Omar in there also as one of the most influential I mean how, how, how is that possible Omar is a, is a product of prophetic molding uh, so the transformation of you know the alchemical transformation of lead to gold that occurs amongst the companions of the Prophet, Abu Dhar al-Ghifari, from a tribe of really brigands, and just becomes so upright that he can't even live with people anymore. I mean, it's, it's just amazing. Or, or somebody like Aisha. Aisha, Aisha had the Prophet I mean, we can't even imagine it, but you know, had the Prophet never come, who is Aisha? Aisha, nobody would ever know a name like Aisha bint Abi Bakr, and yet she's one of the most important women in human history, and she's influenced countless people, men and women. So she's amazing. So, I mean, the greatest miracle, according to our tradition, is the Quran itself. But to understand that miracle takes a considerable amount of time to really to to penetrate its mysteries and and. And, and get, I mean to penetrate some of its mysteries and get a glimpse of it. It takes a long time. But the more you study, the more miraculous it becomes. That's undeniable. But one of the great miracles of the Quran is the fact that the Ajam can memorize it without knowing what it means. And we made this book easy to remember. And you, you, you see people that memorize it perfectly. And then another miracle of the Qur'an is tajweed. Because why is it that people, I've met um, Pakistanis that can't speak Arabic with, except with an accent, and yet they can recite the Qur'an with perfect tajweed. It's amazing. I mean, how is it that people can learn? And then, and then also how, how is it we don't know how the Torah was originally recited at the time of Moses. We don't know how the Greek of the New Testament was recited. And I, I had two years of Greek, and I, my, my, the Greek teacher told us on more than one occasion, you know, we think it was pronounced this way, we don't know. So even the Greek, Koine Greek of the New Testament is, is we don't have a tajweed of it, like uh, orthoopy, I think they call it. So, 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 Tajweed is a miracle of, of Islam. And, and then uh, the Prophet says, like, where do you get the Taj Mahal and the, the Alhambra Palace? I mean, how is it that beauty, Western beauty of Islam, Spain, when they show brochures to visit Spain, they show the Alhambra Palace. That was built by Muslims. It wasn't built by Christians. And then when they show... Hindus, when they show their tourist things to visit <laughs> India, they show a Muslim mosque. And then the Jews, when they show their brochures to visit Israel, they show a mosque that Muslims built. Like, how is the, why, why, what's so amazing about, it? because it's, what civilization created those? Like, what, what was in the souls of those people that that came out of them? Early on, too. I mean, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, that's very early. And I was once, I heard a lecture on Al-Quds. You know, because, I mean, even though we know Masjid Al-Aqsa is actually another part of the, the, the mount. But uh, the, the Bayt al-Maqdis, you know, where, where the Prophets had the Isra and the Mi'raj. Um, rather, it was the Isra was to it and then the Mi'raj was from it. But um, 
So I, I heard this, uh, this uh, amazing architect in Colorado, and he was a student of Keith Critchlow, who's a famous sacred geometrician that studied Islamic art. And uh, he was explaining how this is almost a perfect building. Um, there's only one problem architecturally. There's not an intermediary. Um, because if you look at most buildings, they would have a little, between the dome and the base, there would be an intermediary. So that's like heaven and earth, and then you have an intermediary. So when he finished the lecture, I went up to him and I said, you know, I think you're, you're totally wrong about that. He said, what? He said, well, I'm just, I mean, architecturally, we would see that as a flaw uh, in the structure because that intermediary base wasn't there. I said, but that mosque symbolizes a man who went to heaven and had no intermediary because even Jibril had to leave him. And so it's actually perfect if you want to. <laughs> it's the meeting of heaven and earth. So he was like, eh, that's a very interesting point. <laughs> so anyway, uh, that, you know, that's, I think those are miracles of, of uh, our prophet. And